Mongolian shamanism, more broadly called the Mongolian folk religion, or occasionally Tengarism, refers to the animistic and shamanic ethnic religion that has been practiced in Mongolia and its surrounding areas including Buryatia and Inner Mongolia at least since the age of recorded history. The Mongolian endonym is Bumorgul. In the earliest known stages it was intricately tied to all other aspects of social life and to the tribal organization of Mongolian society. Along the way, it has become influenced by and mingled with Buddhism. During the socialist years of the 20th century it was heavily repressed and has since made a comeback. Yellow shamanism is the term used to designate the particular version of Mongolian shamanism which adopts the expressive style of Buddhism. Yellow indicates Buddhism in Mongolia, since most Buddhists there belong to what is called the Gelug or yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism, whose members wear yellow hats during services. The term also serves to distinguish it from a form of shamanism not influenced by Buddhism according to its adherents, called black shamanism. Mongolian shamanism is centered on the worship of the Tngri gods and the highest Tenjur heaven, god of heaven, god or Kormusta Tengri. In the Mongolian folk religion, Genghis Khan is considered one of the embodiments, if not the main embodiment, of the Tenjur. The mausoleum of Genghis Khan in Ordo City, in Inner Mongolia, is an important center of this worship tradition. Topic. Features Topic. Mongolian shamanism is an all-encompassing system of belief that includes medicine, religion, a reverence of nature, and ancestor worship. Central to the system were the activities of male and female intercessors between the human world and the spirit world, shamans and shamanesses they were not the only ones to communicate with the spirit world. Nobles and clan leaders also performed spiritual functions, as did commoners, though the hierarchy of Mongolian clan based society was reflected in the manner of worship as well. <laughs> Divinities and their class divisions Klaus Hess described the complex spiritual hierarchy in clan-based Mongolian society based on sources that go back to the 13th century. The highest group in the pantheon consisted of 99 Tngri 55 of them benevolent or white, and 44 terrifying or black, 77 Natagai or earth mothers, besides others. The Tngri were called upon only by leaders and great shamans and were common to all the clans. After these, three groups of ancestral spirits dominated. The Lord Spirits were the souls of clan leaders to whom any member of a clan could appeal for physical or spiritual help. The Protector Spirits included the souls of great shamans and shamanesses The Guardian Spirits were made up of the souls of smaller shamans and shamanesses and were associated with a specific locality including mountains, rivers, etc. in the clan's territory. The difference between great, white and small, black in shamans, tngri, etc. was also formative in a class division of three further groups of spirits, made up of spirits who were not introduced by shamanist rites into the communion of ancestral spirits but who could nonetheless be called upon for help. They were called the three accepting the supplications the whites were of the nobles of the clan, the blacks of the commoners, and a third category consisted of the evil spirits of the slaves and non-human goblins. White shamans could only venerate white spirits and if they called upon black spirits they lost their right in venerating and calling the white spirits black shamans only black spirits and would be too terrified to call upon white spirits since the black spirits would punish them. Black or white was assigned to spirits according to social status, and to shamans, according to the capacity and assignment of their ancestral spirit or spirit of the shaman's descent line. Reverence for Genghis Khan Nationwide reverence of Genghis Khan had existed until the 1930s, centered on a shrine which preserved mystical relics of Genghis, that was located in the Ordos Loop of the region of Inner Mongolia, in China. The Japanese, during the occupation of China, tried to take possession of the relics in order to catalyse a pro-Japanese Mongol nationalism, but they failed, within the Mongolian people. 
S Republic 1924 to 92 the Mongolian native religion was suppressed and Genghis shrines destroyed in Inner Mongolia, otherwise, the worship of the cultural hero persisted, the hereditary custodians of the shrine survived there, preserving ancient manuscripts of ritual texts, written partially in an unintelligible language called the language of the gods. With the establishment of the people, S. Republic of China, the Chinese rallied Mongol nationalism to the new state and constructed the Shrine of Genghis Khan or Shrine of the Lord, as it is named in Mongolian in Ordos City, where they gathered the old sanctuary tents, confirmed the guardians of the groups in office, and subsidized annual sacrifices. The shrine in Ordos has since then become the focal point of a revival of Genghis Khan's reverence throughout Inner Mongolia. The Han Chinese, the major ethnic group in Inner Mongolia, pay themselves homage to him as the spiritual foundation of the Yuan dynasty. Various other temples of Genghis Khan, or branches of the shrine in Ordos, have been established in Inner Mongolia and northern China. Ovus <inaudible> <inaudible> Ovus or Aobaoes Mongolian, Ovu traditional Mongol, are sacrificial altars of the shape of a mound that are traditionally used for worship in the indigenous religion of Mongols and related ethnic groups. Every Ovu is thought as the representation of a god. There are Ovus dedicated to heavenly gods, mountain gods, other gods of nature, and also to gods of human lineages and agglomerations. In Inner Mongolia, the Aobaoes for worship of ancestral gods can be private shrines of an extended family or kin people sharing the same surname, otherwise they are common to villages dedicated to the god of a village, banners or leagues. Sacrifices to the Aobaoes are made offering slaughtered animals, joss sticks, and libations. History Topic. Mongolia Topic. Various aspects of shamanism, including the Tngri and their chief deity Kamasada Tngri, are described in the 13th century The Secret History of the Mongols, the earliest historical source in Mongolian. Sources from that time period, though, do not present a complete or coherent system of beliefs and traditions. A much richer set of sources is found from the 17th century on, these present a Buddhist-influenced, yellow, shamanism but in the opinion of many scholars they indicate the continued tradition of an older shamanism. Buddhism first entered Mongolia during the Yuan dynasty 13th, 14th century and was briefly established as a state religion. The cult of Genghis Khan, who had been accepted into the Tngri, the highest pantheon of spirits in Mongolian shamanism, became annexed into Buddhist practice as well. Mongolia itself was at a political and developmental standstill until the 16th century, when after the conversion of Altan Khan Buddhism re-established itself. In 1691, after Outer Mongolia had been annexed by the Qing dynasty, Buddhism became the dominant religion of the entire area and shamanism began incorporating Buddhist elements. Violent resistance in the 18th century by the hunting tribes of northern Mongolia against the Buddhist ruling group, the Khalkha Mongols, led to the foundation of black shamanism. During the Soviet domination of the Mongolian People's Republic, all varieties of shamanism were repressed. After 1991, when the era of Soviet influence was over, religion including Buddhism and shamanism made a comeback. Recent research by anthropologists has indicated that shamanism continues to be a part of Mongolian spiritual life. Agnes Bertalan, for instance, recorded a series of invocations and chants to the important deity Dayan Deer in 2005 in Kavsgal province. In June 2017, psychology professors Richard Knoll and Leonard George conducted fieldwork among Mongol shamans and posted to YouTube seven short videos of a nocturnal summer solstice fire ritual held near midnight some 20 kilometers outside Ulaanbaatar. The event was organized by Jargalsachin, the head of the Corporate Union of Mongolian Shamans, and was closed to tourists. Buryasha <inaudible> <inaudible> The territory of the Buryats, who live around Lake Baikal, was invaded by the Russian Empire in the 17th century, and came to accept Buddhism in the 18th century at the same time they were recognizing themselves as Mongol, to which extent Buryat shamanism mixed with Buddhism is a matter of contention among scholars. 
a 19th century division between black and white shamanism, where black shamanism called on evil deities to bring people misfortune while white shamanism invoked good deities for happiness and prosperity, had completely changed by the 20th century. Today, black shamanism invokes traditional shamanic deities, whereas white shamanism invokes Buddhist deities and recites Buddhist incantations but wears black shamanist accoutrements. White shamans worship Sagan Yubgen and Burke and Garbel the, ancestral Buddha". the proliferation of Buryat shamans in the 1990–2001 period is analyzed as an aspect of historical and genetic search for roots. Among the marginalized Buryat peoples of Mongolia, Russia and China by Ipe Shimamura, Associate Professor of Cultural Anthropology and Mongolian Studies at the University of Shiga Prefecture in Japan. <laughs> Attributes of the shamans An important attribute for Mongolian shamans is shared with all other shamanisms of Inner Asia. Mongolian shaman drums may incorporate the shaman's ongan or ancestral spirit, as in a drum described by Carol Pegg, where the drum handle represents that ongan. The drum's skin was often made of horse skin, the drum itself standing for the saddle animal on which the shaman rides or the mount that carries the invoked spirit to the shaman. Topic see also topic Sami drum shamanism in Siberia Tengri Toli shamanism. Topic Notes topic topic References topic topic Notes topic topic Bibliography topic Bertalan, Agnes 2005. An Invocation to Dion Der Collected from a Darkhad Shaman's Descendant. In Kara Georg. The Black Master, Essays on Central Eurasia in honor of Georg Kara on his 70th birthday. Otto Harrisovitz Verlag. pp. 21-33. ISBN 9783447051866. Retrieved 14 August 2012. Hess, Klaus a Note on the Transformation of White, Black and Yellow Shamanism in the History of the Mongols, Studies in History, 2 1, 17-30. doi, 10.1177, Hess, Klaus On the History of Mongolian Shamanism in Anthropological Perspective. Anthropos. 82 4-6, 403-13. JSTOR 40463470. E.M. Nineteen Ninety Eight. Kagan Abugan. Mythologia Fourth Ed. Bolsa Rasijska Encyclopedia. Peg. Carol. Two Thousand One. Mongolian Music, Dance, and Oral Narrative: Performing Diverse Identities. University of Washington. ISBN 9780295981962. Kagan Abugan. Retrieved 13 August 2012. Shimamura, Ipe. 2004. Yellow Shamans. Mongolia. In Walter, Mariko Namba, Newman Fridman, Eva Jane. Shamanism, an Encyclopedia of World Beliefs, Practices, and Culture. Shamanism, an Encyclopedia of World Beliefs, Practices, and Culture. 1. ABC Clio. pp. 649 and N 651. ISBN 9781576076962. Kagan Abugan. Archived from the original on 15 July 2014. Baden, C. R. Modern History Mongolia. Routledge, 2013. ASIN BOOK1GW48Y Isabel Charlo. Chinggis Khan, Ancestor, Buddha or Shaman. On, Mongolian Studies, Journal of the Mongolia Society, 31, 2009. pp. 207-258. John Mann. Genghis Khan. Bantam, 2005. ISBN 0553814982 John Mann. Genghis Khan, Life, Death and Resurrection. Bantam Press, London, 2004. ISBN 9780553814962. Kagan Abugan. Kagan Abugan. Kagan the Religions of Mongolia. Routledge, 2000. ISBN 0710306857. Xing Li. Festivals of China's Ethnic Minorities. China Intercontinental Press, 2006. ISBN 7508509994 Further reading Burra, Shagdaran 
about the history of the Tngri cult of the Mongols. Three Mezdunarodna Nachna Prakticheska Konferencia, Tengrinsvo i Episkoi Nasledi Naradov Evrazi Istoki i Sovremenost 1 Po 3 Iula 2011 in Russian.